All right, welcome to the video. Just a, just a quick one. Put the earphones in. This may contain coarse, explicit adult language. Maybe. Might be a few bo F-bombs here and there. We'll see how we go. Um, why are most cyclists obese or overweight or chunky monkey or tubby flubby? And there's nothing wrong if you are. All right? If you're a jabber the hut on wheels, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not shaming. This video here is generally to help. I use a bit of humor and a bit of banter and Aussie humor and stuff like that. But it's just genuinely, I, I don't like seeing people suffer. You know, if, if you've got a goal of getting lean and mean, you know what I mean, and stop, have people stop making fat jokes about you, then I'm here to help. You know, because it would suck. It would suck as a guy to look down and not see your dong because all you can see is not a spare tie. We can you see, you see a, you see a mattress. You know what I mean? You see like a, a swag rolled up just covering your manhood you can't see you, can't, you don't even have still there anymore you've got so much your estrogen your testosterone is aromatizing your estrogen so much you've got boobs bigger than my girlfriend's ever have you know what I mean like it's just it would suck man health issues sleep apnea you know just like you can't keep up with your kids you, someone breaks in your house you're so all you can do is probably sit on them and crush them you know you can't run down the street you couldn't save yourself from, or your family members from a tsunami you couldn't you can't do nothing other than out last everyone on a 365 day water fast which is never going to happen so but I'm here to help you lose the chub forever alright and change your whole paradigm on, on weight loss so the reason why people you know and why, why am I qualified to make this video because oh, I read a book because I like just googled stuff up no I've been a personal trainer for 24 years since 1996 training my friends female friends want to lose weight and we go walking and they're stuck in the cycling and just so I've been around nutrition as well since I was eight years of age. I was reading nutrition books when I was eight. My mum would have them on the shelf. My mum was a cereal dieter. It's like most most Australian women are cereal dieters. Most men as well, and Americans, and, and now Asians and Africans. Like pretty much everyone's doing some sort of diet. So I was exposed to it early on. My mum had massive mood swings, which every woman has, especially every mother. Being a mum. Damn, that's tough. Being a single mom, even tougher. So, you know, you combine that with the extra cycle and the, the pressures and finances and outrageous kids and then doing yo-yo dieting and carb restriction and intermittent fire. Just all the... It's just, you know, man. It's a wonder my mom's still alive, man. So it's just, you know, I've seen a lot. That's my qualifications and helping th training thousands of people to their goals over the last 24 years and seeing people reach those goals and then just stay there and do great and I see people reach a goal and they go no I want it f faster or I'm going to do this now and then they just raise most of their hard work <laughs> you know lose years of their life wasted time so you know and I find it fascinating absolutely fascinating myself super lean super lean uh, at my natural weight I'm 183 centimeters six foot tall my normal natural weight no steroids nothing i'm about between 59 and 66 kilos that's my you know that's my default setting there on a high carbohydrate unlimited carb diet we're counting them now set about 78 kilos with anabolic steroids doing a bit of a series on that one anabolic steroids just add weight they add muscle they add water they add blood they add bone they just add mass you know on your body so Steroids don't make you lean. Steroids make you heavier and heavier. That's what people always do who do a lot of steroids want to cut down for the, the competitions and, on stage and stuff. Just take massive diuretics. Risk, risk dying from... They take so much diuretics, they risk dying from heart attack, from kidney failure. They do such crash diets, they risk suicide. They're so depressed and suppressed. You know, it's just... Bodybuilding's not a healthy thing at that level. Definitely not. Anyway, we're talking about not bodybuilding, but body, body shaping, body sculpting. Fat people are fat primarily because they eat too much fat. The human body needs adult, not babies. Babies need more fat. Breast milk has more fat uh, in terms of percentage of calories. The human adult needs a two, around 1 to 2 grams a day of omega-3 fatty acids. 1 to 2 grams. So I highly recommend if your goal is minimum body fat, the fat we eat is the fat we wear, then you keep your fat intake under 10 grams of fat a day, and my friends, <laughs> you will shred up so quick, so easily, so effortlessly, okay? You know, because your body can finally tap into the fat it's got. 
And what people do is they go, no, but I don't want to give up my bacon. I don't want to give up my, my vegan fatty burgers or my fries or my KFC or my vegan full coconut oil ice cream and cacao wowie stuff. And I don't want to give up my fatty food. So I'm going to do calories in, calories out. Eat less, burn more, blah, 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 blah. And, and people do that. And then they yo-yo, boom, boom, boom. I was talking to a mate last night, you know, and um, I love these topics. And he's like, no, I, you know, I, I, was, I, I was 90 kilos in your program, Harley. Same height as me. 90 kilos. And I said, dude, that's bullshit, man. Bullshit. 90 kilos. I'd have to use Tren probably to get 90 kilos, you know, lean. And, he's, and I was like, you eating just fruit, rice, and sugar? He's, yep. I was like, okay, really? So I did a bit of homework, a bit of forensic, a bit of detective work. And I jumped on his Instagram account, scrolled back down to 2017, 2016. And what do I see? I see vegan fries and vegan fatty burgers and, you know. And he's like, oh, that's just holiday food. And I said, dude, you just said fruit, rice, and sugar. all you fucking ate. You know, all you ate. You know, it's a bit like, it's a bit like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just like, I was just, just doing that, man. And yeah, yeah, just doing that. You know, it's, it's a bit like someone saying, you know, do you use steroids, Harley? And I'm like, oh, like, you know, like, for like five seconds of the day, you know? No, no, I don't use steroids. Oh, but there's a surveillance of you putting some pills in your mouth. Oh, yeah, but like, you know, like, that's like something like five seconds a day, you know? It's like 24 hour hours in the day. It's five seconds, mate. Just pop, pop. I just, come on, no. No, I'm natty, bro. Full natty, bro. It's like, it's like, you know, you, you, your school teacher says, where's your homework? And you're like, I've done it. And they're like, we can't see it. Oh, no, I did it, though. Yeah, I did it. Oh, trust me, I did it. It's like, well, he, I mean, so in court, it wouldn't hold up. You know, it would not hold up. Um, and it doesn't hold up. Everybody lies, man. If you're fat, you simply eat too much fat. Don't bullshit me and say that if you eat just fruit, rice, and sugar, you're full of fruit bat shit. Seriously, people out there, you know? Full of shit. Um, and I'm not sure if people are like just trying to get a different answer from me. Or they genuinely believe. They, or they just forgot. They get calorie amnesia. Fat amnesia. Oh, oh no. I, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, they think it doesn't matter. Well, I, just, I eat mostly fruit, rice, and sugar. It's not what we eat as much as what we don't eat that really matters. If you don't eat the bacon, if you don't eat the vegan fatty food, if you don't eat the fats, you have such low body fat. You know, I mean? your face will be so lean. Your abs will be popping. If you're a guy, woman, you'll just be slim. You know what I mean? Women should never have abs. If you've got abs as a woman, you're really fucking yourself up. You're really fucking yourself up. You're crashing your estrogen. You're crashing your pregnant alone. You're crashing your estrogen. You're crashing your estrogen. You're crashing your estrogen. The thing that makes you feminine. You're crashing that. Bad idea. Oh, but I want abs because you, you lose your abs, you lose your boobs, you lose your femininity. Simple as that. And to if you're trying to track guys, it's like, Hmm. Uh, I want a feminine woman, and there's, 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 I'm not here to say if you want to be masculine or feminine, that's fine. So you're, you're cool. But a lot of women chasing the abs because thinking that guys like that. No guys like abs on the chick, man. We don't. And then you get abs, and you got to get a boob job. You know, and then your hair falls out because you're using so much anavar, and then you got to wear a wig or a hair extensions, which is fine. I'm just saying. But that's the consequence of stuff. You know what I mean? And just if you wear a wig over boob job, doesn't make you a bad person. I'm just saying. People don't understand the consequences. You know. There's consequences everything. Um, but just people don't understand what's going on out there. They just get lied to. People photoshopping photos. Of their, I don't use steroids. I haven't had a boob job. I don't do liposuction. I just eat this. You know what I mean? Like we... Man, everybody lies. I lie. Everyone lies, you know. I don't lie, though, when it comes to... If someone's got a genuine goal of health and fitness. Or a bicycle purchase or whatever. Like, they want the honest truth. I'm going to fucking give it to them. All right. I might lie, I might hide some information from my mum If I tell her, it make her stress I had a bike crash today, mum, you know Why would I tell my mum that? Are you okay, Yeah, I'm fine You know, now I've got a broken leg So there's times where you have to lie To protect the feelings of women, mostly Children, sometimes even, you know Kids might be scared, you might be scared um, Are you scared, mummy, daddy? No, nah, it's okay Calms the kid down If you're like, I'm shit scared, we're all gonna die <laughs> You gotta lie, you know. So there's, you have to lie. You have to develop the skill of lying. But if you lie to people who are trying to help you, then you, you're gonna, you're gonna miss out. You know, you're gonna miss out because you will get the wrong information. 
So that's just the reality. Um, fruit, rice and sugar, corn, pasta, under 10 grams of fat a day. And ideally, keep it vegan. Why does vegan work so good for fat loss, for weight loss, for getting slimmer? I don't know, there's some X factors there. Maybe it's the hormones that are absent in the plant foods. That are hormone, hormone, anabolic hormones are rich in animal products. Right? So if you've got a, if, let's say I've got a, let's say you've got two twin sisters, right? And they're both 60 kilos. No, that's, they're 70 kilo women, 70 kilo women, 165 centimeter, it's a pretty average height here in Australia. The 165, 70 kilos. And they're both eating you know, two and a half, three thousand calories a day. If you put, the tw- one twin on my protocol, two and a half, three thousand calories a day, as much carbs as she want, she will slim down long term. She'll have better mood, she'll have better quality guys in her life. She'll just make better choices, better decisions, and manifest better things in her life because she's carved up. And the other twin who does calories in, calories out, and she's like, oh my god, I haven't burned enough calories. I'm gonna go have to go around the block a few more times. And that's that's eating disorder, man. That's a fucking eating disorder. That's disordered eating. That stuff kills your life quality. You know, it kills your life quality. I I was been there myself by accident. I remember doing the raw food thing back in the day, 2002. I'm like, just gonna eat raw food, and I saw it as a challenge. I'm in my 20s. I'm like, this is a challenge, and I'm a rebel, rebel for my own laws, and blah 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 blah. And so I was doing this raw food thing, and um, I still eat a lot of fruit, love fruit. But I remember just like just tanking, tanking my fitness, you know, because I'm like, you know, if I can't find fruit, I just won't eat. You know, that was not eating disorder, but that was disordered eating. You know, uh, and I was tr- just trying to increase my performance on the bike, but my performance on the bike was going downhill. And so that's why I stopped that style of eating because then I got a power meter. I'm like, hang on, this, this power is not. This is not right. I should be putting out more power for this for for how lean I am and how long I've been cycling. And I did my test my red blood cells and I had anemia, low level anemia. And I'm like, this is what we're we doing. So that's why I ditched 100 percent raw food diet because I'm all about performance. You know, and health is very important as well. But if your health increases, your performance increases. Okay, you can't be healthy if you're not fit. And just because you're fit doesn't mean you're healthy. All right? Think about that one. To be healthy, you have to be fit. But just because you're fit doesn't mean you're healthy. What be an analogy for that one? Um, maybe someone leave it. I had a good one the other day. But that's that's just it. That's the root rally right there. People just forget about that. So if your if your fitness is going down, assuming you're a natural athlete, if your fitness is going down, you are losing health. Now I don't mean like, you know, like you have ebbs and flows of the year. You know, sometimes you're peaking in summer and in winter you're backing on off recovery. Okay, it's different. But if you're like putting all the work in and you're going downhill, it's because your health is going downhill. Okay. If your fitness is going up over time over the weeks and the tests are going up, okay, you're doing well. But over time, if you're going downhill, your health is going downhill. If you're putting the same work in, the same drive, same motivation, and you're going downhill, your health is going downhill. Um, but people understand that. We live in such a sedentary world because people are doing calories and calories out, you know. Like, <laughs> I remember, uh, Freely, as Freely, for those who know, is a, a girlfriend and partner of mine back in the day, 2007. She was about 73 kilos about 165 centimeters tall now she's like maybe 48 49 kilos so a few weeks ago very slim and um you know she came to adelaide back in 2007 late 2007 and i said we'll sell your car we'll get you on the bike and i'm going to turn you into a fucking lean mean fitness machine on unlimited carbs and she's like yeah, yeah, yeah. but she, part of it believed it so she did she quit her job she was in debt. We just, I just, just wipe that debt. Just fuck it off, you know. Blah blah blah. Just leave. You don't have to pay it. That's another part of the story. But anyway, she's moved to Adelaide. She was committed. She'd done all the yo-yo dieting, calories in, calories out. She trained so hard. She had like shin splints. She'd put frozen peas on her shins. She says this was in the videos. She was doing weight loss drugs like clenbuterol, which is like stupidest thing ever for weight loss. Dumbest thing ever for weight loss. Never ever use clen for weight loss. Never use it for weight loss. It's dumb, man. It's like using a freaking, uh, <laughs> it's like using a sledgehammer to remove a cockroach from your kitchen. Just smashing all the cupboards open to, to try and remove a cockroach. It's stupid. Just stupid. Just use your hand, catch the roach, and chuck it outside. But so she did all that, and she was the heaviest weight ever because it's thyroid. The T3, T4 is so suppressed from all the yo-yos and the cleanse and all that stuff. TSH is right up there. So she was she weighed more than me. At the time, I was about 61 kilos. So she was about you know 10, 12 kilos heavier than me. 
Um, and I was the first guy she'd ever sort of like been with who was lighter than her. <laughs> so, you know, but, but again, she believed me. She's like, well, this guy's freaking rail thin. I'm going to go with that. So I trained her up and she got in great shape. We built a social media career. But, you know, it, it was just great to see. She put in the hard work as well. Yeah, but she was so consistent. She was very, very militant about fat intake. Very militant about fat intake. She would always eat. She'd always drink the water. She'd sit in bed at night time. She'd lead her water before she went to bed. She'd pee at night. She was just very, very militant. She was squatting on top. She did everything I said to do. Yeah, eventually, like, at the start, it was like, you know, she wouldn't because she's like a bit stubborn like me. But eventually, she did everything I said she had to do. She got incredible results, kept it out easily. And now people today make videos about her, about how, how she's too thin. You know what I mean? So it's like... If you do get too thin, stop doing my protocol, all right? Stop riding the bike, eat more fats. Simple as that, for people out there. Um, but that's, that's the you know that's the main story out there. So if people say, oh, but, 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 I'm like, well, you can't debate me. All right? Where's like where's your where's your results? You're fat, your wife's fat, or your kids are fat, or whatever. I'm not saying you're a bad person or diss. I'm just saying, it's like me, like me, you're the lifeguard, right? And I'm in the swimming pool, or I'm at the, on the jetty on the beach, in the water, drowning. And I'm like, help, help, help. And you're the lifeguard. You walk over to me, and in between dunks of the waves, coughing my lungs out and full of water, I'm like, <coughs> are you qualified to be a lifeguard? Did you have a life jacket that's not pink? This life jacket doesn't, it feels itchy, it's chafing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm drowning. I don't have fucking time to question you. You know, I just got to take your fucking advice, follow your direction, and I'll be safe. So these people out there who try to argue with me, I'm like, dude, you don't, dude, 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 or do that, you don't have any results, man. And the results you have now by starving yourself will soon go. You'll rebound again. And look at your diet the last year or 10 years or 20 years. You're just a serial dieter, like my mum. All right? Do serial, and that's, yeah, there's no dissing there. I'm just saying that, do serial dieters ever change? I, they do. I've seen it. It's very, 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 very rare. It's very, very rare that a serial dieter will just stop and go, okay, I'm doing doing my protocol and just carry on for life. It's very rare. It does happen. And those people who do it have an extraordinary quality of life because they've always got carbs just dripping in their system. Their mood's their best ever for them. Their performance is best ever for them. Their productivity, their libido, their everything, just things are best for them. Sleep quality you know, the family's like, wow, the drug, drug addiction is just, <laughs> drug usage, <laughs> zero to very, very minimal, alcohol, zero to minimal, SSRI medications, <laughs> gone, uh, type 2 diabetes, good medications, at 100% gone, type 1 diabetics, minimum insulin, best insulin uh, sensitive ever, so, you know, this is, this is the protocol works, man, it's under 10 grams fat a day, as much carbs as you want, you can't eat too much carbs, I was talking today to someone, a lady cyclist, and, uh, she says, oh, you know, but sugar, you know, sugar's good if you're active. And I said, yeah, if anyone. Sugar's good for everyone. Like, if you're in a hospital bed, in a coma, what's, what are they dripping into your veins, IV? Dextrin 50, you know, dextrose, glucose, sugar. They're putting sugar into your veins, into your main vein. The main veining sugar. And you're in a hospital bed, man. And you could be obese. And after six months, laying in bed, not talking, not even moving, nurses have to move you because you don't get bed sores. You will, you will emaciate from 150 kilos down to 70 kilos if you say if you're six foot tall, you know? You will emaciate down on sugar. That's where anabolic steroids were designed. They're like, how can we prevent people losing all this weight? And they get, that's where anabolic steroids help people recover from burns and wastage and, you know, caxia and all that sort of stuff like that. Waste, wasting diseases. And sugar's self-limiting. You can't eat more sugar than you need. You gag. You'll be like, Ugh. I mean, for a dare. I mean, if you, if you said for a million dollars right now, eat a two kilo bag of sugar, I, th I think I could do it. I'm gonna. I'm damn gonna fucking try. You know, I mean, two, two million bucks for two kilos of sugar or a million bucks. I'm, I'm gonna do it. That's, that's, that's viral shit right there. But if you said do it 50 bucks, I'm like, I couldn't do it, man. <laughs> two kilos of sugar? Like, you're just gonna be gagging, man. But oil, you could drink two liters of oil. Might vomit up, maybe not. You know, that's two kilos of fat right there. You might b b bust out your gallbladder. <laughs> or gallbladder surgery. Symptom of excess dietary fat. Type 2 diabetes, excess dietary fat. You know, insulin resistance, things like that, inflammation. Fatty acids. Fatty acids. Sugars, pH neutral. Um, but yeah, I sound like the crazy dude. Just repeat myself, same videos every day. 
pretty much for the last freaking 12 years on YouTube, 13 years on YouTube. Um, that's the fact, man. That's why I'm so lean. That's why you don't have results. Again, not trying to be arrogant or a douchebag, but again, the life jacket example. You know, I'm the drowning person. You're the lifeguard. Imagine if I said, hey, blah, blah, blah. You're like, dude, you're an idiot. Just listen to me. You're going to drown. Um, not, not, not just listen to me. Take take action on my advice. Because I can say, hey, the life jacket's next to you. I've thrown it in the water. Oh, cool. I heard you. I'm still drowning, though. Grab the freaking life jacket. Put it fucking on. So it's just the fat, man. It's the fat. It's, it's fat. It's the culprit. I see it all the time. But it is... I, I think most people... What's the stats... I reckon 99% of serial dieters, this is after training thousands of people and having conversations with way, way more, love talking to people, got the gift of the gab, mouth of the south, love hearing my own voice, you know, I'd say 99% of people, serial dieters, never stop serial dieting, you know, um, just, yeah, I would say 99%, the 1% go, yeah, you know what, mm, I want a better quality of life, I want a better quality of life, calories in calories out it's bullshit you know there's more to life being lean and my mood is more important and here's the thing you have the best mood and you will be lean you'll be your leanest on my protocol you know what I mean you'll be so lean police look at you like you're a crack addict like you're a drug dealer come through customs hey sir come over here sort of random search random search wow it's every time I come through random search no worries you know it's all part of the deal yeah, you, you Tour de France riders will message you for weight loss tips. They'll see you riding. And be like, oh, yeah, you go ride with us. You're lean. Look how lean you are. Hey, you're lean, mate. Fucking lean, bro. Lean. Lean gains. You know, you, you yeah, women will say, yeah, you're too lean. Ew. You know, like, so it's just, you're lean as, man. Lean. You know? Uh, and if you're a woman, wow. This, this, my protocol is definitely best for women because it really enhances our aesthetics. Now, you can get too lean, all right? If you get too lean, please eat more fats. Eat more fats. If you're getting your body fat's too low, your abs are popping, your boobs are gone. Please eat more fat. Now, some people, some women genetically, are just you know, they're not super busty. That's fine. I'm just saying though, if you if you're worried about breast tissue going away, just but don't ride the bike as much. Or just have a break from the bike. Get an e-bike. Eat more fat. Okay. So if you if you're just wasting away, please stop the cycling, the bicycle riding. Please eat more fat. Okay, simple as that. Because um, yeah, I've seen people go get get too lean, and it's like no, no, no. Now we're going too far. All right, stop the. Because you're starting to feel so good, you've got all this energy, and you just train, 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 ride, ride, ride. Just get shredded down. All right. One, if you lose your period, you're too lean. Okay, you're too lean. You should always have a, a monthly cycle, menstruation, for estrogen balance, progesterone, pregnenolone. Pre, uh, you know. It's, it's just so important. Pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is like a precursor for many, many hormones in the body. It's very, very important. Don't get so lean that your pregnenolone production is just like <laughs> suppressed. Because when that's suppressed, you are missing out on many, many high quality things in life. All right? So yeah, that's the deal there. Calories in, calories out. Why most cyclists are fat? Because most cyclists... Yo-yo diet, man. I'd say 99% of cyclists, yo-yo diet. In the West, I'm not talking to the, the Chinese person or the African person who's got to ride to work, you know, just for transport. I'm talking to the recreational cyclist. Most recreational cyclists are obese or overweight. It's very, very rare you'll see cyclists as lean as me out there. And if you do, they're generally high-level racers. Pro, they're professional riders. Even professional riders battle their weight all the time because they get told by the fat nutritionists or the nutritionists who don't even ride, "Coach your cars, man. Watch that pro rider, Alex. Alex Dowsett is Alex Dowsett. The Israel cycling team. He did a video recently. I'll do a response to that. And he's like, oh, you know, I will cut the carbs and, blah, blah, and he's battling his weight. He's he's a rider who's like, so he's, he's so slim and he, he, you know, he's a nice guy. And I'm just saying that he he bat, for pro cyclists, so he, I would call him. I wouldn't call him fat, but I wouldn't call him, like, lean, you know what I mean? Like, I could get him way leaner than he is now. I'm just like, man, like, I mean, he looks healthy. <laughs> he looks healthy, you know? He looks healthy. And if you look healthy as a pro cyclist, you probably too, you are too heavy. Unless you're, like, 20 and you're just looking fresh face. But, yeah, if, you're, yeah, if, you, if you look healthy as a pro cyclist or a pro runner, <laughs> you're too heavy, you know, uh, for, for the, your ultimate performance. You know, again, now, pro cycling and health, two different things. So, yeah, he's just like, you know, this, this guy trains the house down. This guy's a freak, man. To be a pro cyclist, you have to be an absolute freak of nature. 
Do you know how fast they can ride and climb and descend? Like, you have to be an absolute freak to be a male professional cyclist. Women, pro cyclists, yeah, yeah, some level of freakiness, but it's easy to be a pro cyclist woman because there's not much competition, there's no money in it, not much money in it, so it's like, not much drugs as much, so it's like, yeah, you can... But the men's, the world tour, well, God, you know, that's, you got to be a freak. So we've got a guy who's a freak, who's a professional athlete, got professional nutritionist, and he's still after 10 years or so as a professional, still battles the bulge on a daily basis. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Cow- and he does cows and cows out. <laughs> professional Tour de France level cyclists, you know, our record holder, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, still battles the bulge because he follows cows and cows out. And that's not to pinpoint him or target him or whatever. That's just an, that's just an example that came out of the top of my head. You know what I mean? It's like, far I'm out, man. It's crazy. I just, I just baffle, man. It's like, it's like having a carbon fiber bike. bike. Or it's like wearing a freaking... It's like being in the army or you're doing some sort of stealth mission and you're wearing a neon orange hat, right? And you're like, man, people keep seeing me. You know, I'm trying to pr- creep up on someone and they just keep seeing this neon hat everywhere. I'm just like, what do I do? Wear a black hat, man. Wear a balaclava. Wear some camo. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, I'm going to wear my neon hat. And I'll kind of keep complaining why I don't get many results. I can't keep results. Cows in, cows out, never works long term. Short term, oh, short term's all I want, Harley. Then you, you, you smash your thyroid. And then you rebound. And then you do a cows and cows out again. Again, yo yo dieting. So identify of yourself. Am I yo 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 dieter? Do I subscribe to cows and cows out? If you do, you're a yo yo dieter. 99% of you out there are going to stay like that for life. That's the one percenters that I try and reach and teach and preach you know and uh, I guess I'm a one percenter because I was doing I've done so many different diets in my life just experimenting with performance and feeling good and health asthma issues and stuff like that asthma and digestions Crohn's IBS whatever you want to call it that triggered me to go I'm going to clean my diet because I feel absolute shit I feel like shit you know I feel like shit my energy is up and down and I just, I'm, I'm a young man I want to be athletic I want to be fit I want to get shit done and I feel like shit. Chronic fatigue, anemia, I feel like shit. So that's what led me to make performance enhancing dietary changes. It wasn't weight focus, you know. Um, I mean, the weight loss is a side benefit as a cyclist and runner, but again, you know, you can get too lean as well. And then it's like, well, you know, do I want to have a girlfriend? Do I want to be attractive, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So that's why I just laugh, man. People say, cars make you fat. I'm like, <laughs> It's like saying neon orange is the best camouflage in, in combat, in, in the war. Yeah, neon orange, man. It's the best cap. No one can see you when you're wearing neon, neon orange. Or a neon orange helmet, man. Like, cars can't see you when you're wearing neon. It's very camouflage on the road. Idiots, man. Fucking idiots. <laughs> and I say that, you know, with affection there. Don't be a fucking idiot in life. You only get one life. Don't miss out. Cowards and cowards out is for teenage eating disorder fucking rich girls with no life purpose yet you know and again don't hate to them either like this this is it's a crazy world man calories and calories are out has to stop under 10 grams of fat a day unlimited carbs as much as you want your body regulates carbs man your body regulates sleep you can't sleep more than you need oh I also can because I miss my alarm and I get, I get late for work and the boss gets angry well go to bed earlier you know what I mean you need as much sleep as your body wants I love it today I went riding this morning came home have some carbs some water you know, have my carbs with me on the bike and have my carbs and watch them some YouTube docos and just fell asleep. Yeah. Turn off my computer as I was falling asleep, laid down for a couple of hours. Feel so good right now. So so good right now. You yeah, just getting that sleep. Just listen to my body. Just feels amazing. Anyway, that's the video. Ramble rants. Cows and cows out. Mate, that is like that's a negative life sentence right there. <laughs>